Welcome, I'm Michael Baker. Thanks for joining me today as we explore concepts with the objective of improving your management skills and growing your business. I'd like to remind you at the beginning of the video here that you can pause and grab a notepad and a pen because I want you to make a commitment to yourself that you will jot down at least one action item, something that you will implement in your business today because that's what it's all about, implementation. You've gotta drive your business forward. Here's some things I'd like you to ponder and I have some questions going on in my mind, things that were stimulated by analyzing other organizations. How long is your business going to be around? Do you know, the statistics on businesses that have been around for a hundred years or more are actually kind of uh, shocking. I don't know what those are off the top of my head, but I remember seeing them one time. There's very few businesses that have been around a hundred years or more. Few businesses last that long. How long will your business be around? Begin with the end in mind, we like to say. And I wonder how far out you've planned. What is your succession plan? Do you have one at all? Do you have individuals in your business or even one individual in your business that you have your eye on and you're trying to develop this person, grow this person and maybe gradually divest your interest in the business while this person builds his own interest in the business and, and maybe looks over, uh, takes over? Is there somebody that you're growing and mentoring to look after the things that you currently look after. These are all really important things to consider. How far out are you planning? You should unequivocally have someone in your business that you're growing. You should have, in fact, anyone who works in your business, you should be working to develop them. However, we can agree that there are certain individuals that stand out from the crowd, some that are more you know, interested in perhaps growing into management and, and perhaps owning their own business. And I've talked before about the importance of celebrating the success of those who are performing well in your organization. And we've talked about those who have aspirations to grow within a business should act as if they own the business. They should act with the owner's interest in mind and before they have any sort of interest in the business, they should really, you know, just simply go out of their way to do everything they can to help the business succeed. We've, we've talked about that in a separate video. I wanna look at this from a slightly different angle and give you some ideas of, of what you might do if you haven't already got a thorough plan in place to start developing people to look after the business. And I wanna convince you at the beginning here that that is really important to do. So if you're not already doing that, regardless of the size of your organization, you can be a one man operation right now. What happens when you get sick? What happens when you have to go on holidays or want to go on holidays? What happens when your energy isn't what it once was and perhaps your health is failing and you can't work as long hours as you currently are. In those cases, what do you plan to do? And perhaps you're thinking, because you're very young, you've started a business, you're young, and you have that feeling of immortality, longevity. I get it, you have lots of energy and everything, but you should start planning for this stuff now. That doesn't mean you have to act today and make radical changes in your business today, but you need to build it into your business plan. You have to have a long-term goal to plan for the longevity of your business and it's wise to plan in a way that it survives you. Your, your business can be viable without you having the day in and day out tasks that you're currently performing. And uh, for those of you who have bigger organizations, have you got your eye on certain people in your, in your business right now? Do an inventory of your people. Is there someone that you could see who will head this operation and continue it to the next generation and for many years to come? If the answer to that is no, it's time to start looking for that person. And maybe they're already in your organization and they're sort of flying under the radar and you haven't noticed. That's unlikely, by the way. It's pro more probable that if they're already in your organization, you already think of them as an outstanding performer and you've noticed that this is someone who is really good but maybe it's time you start thinking of that person in terms of hey is this someone who you can make a, a business partner can you do some profit sharing is there a way that you can 
incorporate that person into your succession planning. Because if you take all the effort to grow a business from the beginning, you want to have a business that'll be there for you when you are no longer part of the business or maybe another way to look at it because I can understand where some of you are thinking no until the day I die I intend to work with this business because I enjoy it so much that's great I really laud that if you have the type of business where you enjoy it so much that you never see yourself wanting to retire that is completely acceptable in fact that's how I feel still I want to be able to control my day and my time and that means I have to rely on other people to drive the business forward and to carry out my vision and to help me create ideas for innovation and to keep on top of the changes in the marketplace and implement all the various things and you will as well so even if you intend to work hard and enjoy yourself you know they say if you really enjoy what you're doing it's never really never really feels like work and I get that so even if you intend to continue to put in your time, so to speak, till the day you die with your business and contribute, that's good. You still need other star individuals to help you so that you can sustain your business beyond, um, and you can give yourself that freedom to do what you want to do within your business. Because almost certainly if your business is more of a fledgling business, you're, you're new, or you are heavily involved right now, there's probably a lot of things that you're doing that maybe someone else could do better than you could, or that you may don't, maybe you don't enjoy those parts of your business, or that may be less relevant in the future due to market changes. Or maybe you just simply won't have the energy to do everything that you're currently doing in the future. Whatever it is, I hope I've convinced you that it's worth giving some thought to regardless of how old you are right now, regardless of how old your business is, how long you've been around, all business plans should allow for some sort of succession planning and you should be thinking well into the future. I get it, you, you, you may be trying to earn a living and you need to worry about today. That's, that's great, definitely wanna focus on what we do today, but we don't wanna do that in the absence of long-term planning. You wanna do both, they're both imperative to the success of your business. So what about this? What about the individuals that are in your business right now? Are, are there any things you can do to ascertain who might be a really good um, fit for grooming into that role of succession and taking over gradually? I think that the answer is clearly, obviously, there are many things you can look to. There, you can create a profile of what the ideal leader of your business would be, and perhaps it would include things such as they'd be passionate about our product and service, they'd be passionate about, passionate about our mission and the vision for the future of the business. This would be somebody who may be a hard worker, maybe they're very honest and ethical and that they're a good communicator. There's a number of things you can look to. But today I just want to focus on one, and that's this idea of more responsibility as a reward. So I'd like you to think to people in your organization that are always looking to do more. You know, there, there's, it's like you, they're insatiable when it comes to finding new things that they can work on. They're always volunteering for whatever project comes up. They want to be on any sort of committee or group that's discussing something for innovation and improvement. They're always interested. Plus they want to implement. They're not just a, a person who sits around and criticizes. And it's not just about being power hungry that they want to have more authority or whatever. It's that they're very interested. They're intrigued at the idea of growing the business. So th that's the kind of thing you're looking for. And I get the idea that when you do performance reviews and things with people in your human resources uh, processes, that people very much would be interested in, uh, it's not uncommon <laughs> for a person to be interested in a pay raise, some sort of, uh, promotion and along with that some increase in remuneration yet the person that you're looking for really is interested in growing and developing even in the absence of an increase in pay that's sort of a litmus test that you can use to determine whether or not somebody is ideal like that the video we, where we talked about a person acting like they are an owner acting with the owner's interest in mind before they have 
that kind of um, role in the organization, that they do the best with what they have right now. They're always doing the best and that's how they will get ahead. Those are the individuals you're looking for. So you as a manager, as an owner of the business, you're looking for someone who's always looking to contribute more. And so when you're considering how to celebrate the success of somebody who's a star performer, and maybe you can't afford to constantly, constantly be giving more money, bear in mind that people have various needs and from one individual to another, they, they vary. So one of course is to earn more money. We all have a need to have some financial sustenance, some things that we can lean on so that we can provide for our basic, uh, you know, for the lifestyle that we aspire to live. And then we also have a basic human need for relationship and interaction with one another. So bear that in mind. Okay. Everybody understands that people would like to have more money. That's a, a given. Let's put that aside for now and think about some of the other things people have. Do you have people in your organization right now who really enjoy the social aspect of work and they communicate with others and not just uh, you know water cooler chat so to speak where they're very social and um, you know want to chit chat about all the things that they did on the weekend and everything that's not what i'm talking about people who just seem to get along with everybody else and have a genuine love for the other people who work with them. They have an appreciation for the skills and they collaborate well with them. They communicate well with them. It's okay. They're joking with them. They may be spending some social time with them outside of work or at lunches and breaks and things like that. Look for people who have that, who really enjoy the aspect of uh, the social, um, component. That's, that's part of the humanities of the business. You understand that. And that's a way you can reward people as well. You can look to have them collaborate more in, in teamwork and that kind of thing. The other thing that people really want is to develop. They want to grow. People don't want to feel stagnant in their role. And you're looking for individuals who really want to grow and develop and learn a new skill set and develop more so that they can be more useful to the business and they contribute that they can contribute more and more. Now I have seen throughout my career where some individuals we thought of as, as being very intelligent, they were very capable of their job. And we had uh, placed these people in our minds as prime candidates for advancement and growth within the organization. And then when we approach them about the possibility of management training or taking on some more responsibility, and perhaps even learning some new skills, they actually surprised us by saying, no, I, I'm happy doing what I do right now. That's perfectly fine. In fact, I'm, I'm very grateful when somebody is candid with me and will communicate that because you don't want to invest and force somebody into a role that they don't see themselves. It's really important part of fit that people perceive of themselves that they are going to be able to advance and grow and, and be a leader. If they don't see that for themselves, you know, you certainly don't want to force that. It's okay to develop somebody who's like, well, I'm a little bit tentative, but uh, I'm interested. Then of course you can work with that person. But I'm talking about occasionally you'll have people who, you know, counterintuitively will say no to the idea of advancement and, and growth within the organization. And that's fine. So what you want to look for is people who of course want that, that all the outward signs are that they would like that. And of course, if you offer that to them, they jump at it. And then people also have a need to feel like they're making a difference and that the, their contributions will survive them. They'll have a legacy uh, and that um, when they're gone, so to speak, either from the organization or from this planet, that they've made a difference that others will benefit from and talk about all these various needs. So the ideal candidates you're looking for to grow will have a healthy balance of all those needs, not just be money hungry all the time. I want to focus on that thing about development and growth. And I would encourage you to start testing your people by asking them to take on more responsibility, giving them more work and more objectives to try to accomplish in the absence of more pay. See the person who does a great job with taking on more and more responsibility and they're just hungry for it. They have a thirst for more 
responsibility, more things. Again, I just keep coming back to more ways that they can contribute. And they're not always looking for more money to be associated with that. That's a great sign because think of yourself as an entrepreneur. That's exactly how you are in building your business. You don't always get rewarded with more money, at least in the short term, for all the various efforts you have to put in. You're continually contributing to your business in every way that you think you can. And that is the thing that energizes you, that motivates you. It's just seeing the innovation and the growth of the business in and of itself is very motivating to you. And if you see that in your people, then you know, hey, this is somebody that might be a really prime candidate for us to consider growing into the role of a succession plan and maybe looking at taking over. Now that can happen over a long period of time or if you are closer to retirement right now, you need to start thinking about this and develop and this can happen very quickly as well. You can plan according to your business needs. The key that I want you to take out of today's discussion is responsibility as its own reward is a great litmus test for who the right individuals are. These people, will relish the opportunity to take on more responsibility. They'd be like, yeah, thanks boss, that's great. I, I look forward to this challenge. I'm not sure I can do this, but I'm very grateful for the uh, confidence you have in me and the faith you're placing in me, and I'm gonna give it my best. And typically these people with that kind of attitude and with the effort and with you meeting your obligations and providing to them the necessary um, clarification of, of your expectation along with the necessary training resources and tools that they may need to meet or exceed your expectations and holding them accountable, they will thrive in, in taking on that more responsibility. So give some consideration to this. Maybe that's your homework today. You jot down, you kind of think to yourself, who do I have like this? If again, if you're a very small organization, you have no one right now, your homework today is to begin to brainstorm. What steps do you need to take to introduce an individual like that? And how can you back off a little bit on the throttle on what you're doing in the business and allow somebody else to contribute more and more? And you know, what will it mean if you fail to do that? Will your organization die? Maybe all the effort you put in won't survive you or some catastrophe and that can happen at any time. So your homework, if you don't have anyone like this in your organization, you're a very small operation is begin to think about what steps you need to take to introduce somebody like that and scale your business. Reach out to us if you need help doing that. Our HR department and uh, our VIPs group, there's various things that you can partake in uh, with uh, in collaboration with BMI and we can help you figure out a way. You may think, no, my business is too small. I barely am making enough money and profit to uh, support myself. Well, there's probably some ways we can help you with that and, and you can grow your business. But many of you listening, uh, you have perhaps family involved in your business. You have other stakeholders right now and you have to, today's homework is to figure out, is one of those an ideal candidate to begin to groom for possible taking over of the business? And if not, what steps will you take to find a person? And then once you do have your eyes on people, start testing them by giving them on, you know, on a small scale, give them a little bit more responsibility, see what they do with it. If somebody takes on more responsibility, and they sort of complain about it. You know, you may not necessarily, uh, I'm always recommending that you share these videos with your people and you can, you don't have to surprise people and you don't have to test them sort of a double blind study or a single blind study where you're, you're testing them with more responsibility without them knowing it's a test. But that is, uh, that is something that I've employed in the past. I've, I've used that technique where you're testing, giving people more responsibility to see, are they complaining? Are they drowning with that more responsibility? Does it cause them to fall apart or do they step up to the challenge and do they deliver results and, and really impress you with that and then give them more and more and then maybe have a, a, an official chat with that person and find out would they see themselves as being interested in completely aligning their interests with yours? And then you can start considering the remuneration part of it and offering them more financial rewards. And perhaps you can make that as part of a profit share and not just a strict, uh, an increase in pay or a salary or something like that. Maybe it can be some kind of profit sharing or actual interest in the company. 
That's the concept I wanted you to think about today. You got to start planning this stuff. We'll talk about this more in future videos and discuss some other ways that you can look at this and some specific strategies. If you're sort of stuck and you don't have anyone, what can you do? Maybe you want to look at some of our videos on uh, recruitment and, and that kind of thing. But that's about where I wanted to leave things today. I wanted to just get, get you thinking about this. Responsibility as its own reward. More responsibility for people in your organization and seeing how they do with it. You can always swoop in and help them if they're struggling a little bit, but you know, you want to pay attention when you've got somebody who really embraces more responsibility in the absence of more money. That's a really good sign for you. And you should embrace those people and, and maybe work on the sharing the vision with them that this might be one day a business that they can take over. At the as we wrap up here, I'd like to remind you to go down into the link in the description there and subscribe for our newsletter. If you're not already subscribed, you can get more business tips and tools and all sorts of things in our email campaigns that go out. We don't spam you. We don't share your information. You click on that link, you enter, enter your name and your email address, and you can be subscribed and get more information, more interesting videos and uh, blogs and articles about business, all kinds of things. So if you haven't already done that, do that and leave a comment that we can all learn from because we need to learn from one another. Perpetual refinement.